Hello everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 39. In this tutorial we are just going to uh, look at some more stuff with our blending. So first we need a we need something to blend in with besides just the background. So we are going to load in another texture. So let's go to where we had my texture. We are going to change this um, two things. First we are going to instead of drawing that piano picture Let's have the pink texture, and then we are also going to load in the grass texture. So let's go to where we are initializing the texture and initialize scene. And first we are going to change the piano to the uh, grass image. And then we are going to do the same thing for the pink texture. That file was just pink square. All right, so let's go up to our render frame. And what we what we are going to do is we're going to uh, render the grass like how we were rendering the piano. So down here where we set the shader resource, we're going to pass in the grass texture and we are going to make it a little bit bigger. So for our world matrix, we will put in, uh, we will add in some scaling. And let's just do it, uh, make it five bigger, which is completely flat. So adjusting the Z does nothing, but let's put it in, it doesn't matter. So let's test this and just see what this looks like. Okay, so we have our grass and we still have the alpha being tied to the grass. Now, let's draw the pink texture in front of the grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put uh, some braces here. Let's see, this is going to be grass. I'm just going to copy all of that and do the same thing for the pink texture. So instead, I'm going to put the pink texture a little bit in front of the grass. So we will translate it by, uh, let's say, negative one. And for the scaling, uh, I'm not going to scale it as much. I'm actually not going to scale it at all. Let's do that. I'm going to uh, put this alpha value outside of that scope. And for the grass, the alpha, we are actually just going to set the graph, the grass to be opaque. So we set it with an alpha of 1.0. And then for the pink square, uh, we're going to have it adjustable with that slider. So the last thing is we need to set the shader resource to that pink square. So let's test this out and see what this looks like. We don't see anything. Oh, just needed to adjust the uh, alpha, I guess. But as you can see, we can uh, increase and decrease the alpha for our pink square. We can see through it. Now, what's important to note here is we still have our depth stencil in action, right? And the way the depth stencil works is we are only drawing pixels. When we go to draw something, we only actually are drawing the pixels if they're closer to the screen than the current pixel on the screen. So we can see this uh, grass through this pink texture. However, what if we drew the pink texture first? Because the pink texture is actually closer to the screen than the grass is. Well, first I'm going to change the alpha. We'll start it at 0.5. So let's move that pink texture before the grass. And we are going to test this now. And you'll see that what happens is even though the uh, the pink texture is see-through, it, it's it seems like it's completely opaque, and the reason is because the grass is not even being drawn uh, behind it. So one solution to this is first you draw all of your opaque objects, and then after that you draw all of your transparent objects. Preferably, you draw the transparent objects from furthest away from the camera to closest so that you can see the transparent objects through each other. 
Now I just want to uh, demonstrate one more thing. It's kind of interesting. So let's say that we have another texture. This is going to be for that pavement texture. And I'm just going to go ahead real quick. Another way we're manage managing the textures in the vertex data right now is disgusting, but we will get to that soon when we learn how to load models. So we are going to load the seamless pavement texture into the pavement texture uh, texture object. And then up here where we render, what we are going to do is we're going to render uh, pavement behind the grass. But we are going to render the pavement first. So essentially we are, let's see, we're setting the alpha. We are going to render the pavement a little bit behind the grass. So we'll set the uh, Z to be four. Set it just a little bit further back behind the grass. And for our shader resource, we are setting it to the pavement texture. And what's important is we are rendering the pavement first. And then we are drawing the pink texture. And then we are drawing the grass. So when we go to test this, you'll see an interesting effect. So what we are seeing here is, you know, we have the pavement behind the grass. So we can't see the pavement through the grass. However, we can see the pavement through this transparent texture because we are drawing the pavement first and then this texture and the texture is being blended with the pavement. And then since the texture is closer to the screen than the grass, then we are uh, not drawing the grass pixels because the depth test. So this is an example of some uh, kind of behavior you'll get if you don't draw the transparent objects after the opaque objects. So we are just going to move the pink texture drawing to the end and give this one more test. And you'll see in this example, now it's exactly, you know, it's how you would expect. We can see through the pink texture and we can see the grass. Uh, we can't see the pavement through the grass and we can't see the pavement through the pink texture. All right, and that is all that we are going to cover in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to look at some more issues with blending, specifically with actual 3D objects. So, I mean, you know, Right now we are drawing 3D objects, but they're completely flat. So we will draw a cube or something, and we will look at issues with that.